The first technique, according to His Eminence, Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Taqi al Mudarrasi, Allah Yahfadahu, is the name of the surah. The first way to be able to know the theme of a surah is name. That should be fairly, not obvious, but a given if someone thinks about it. For many of us, we're very accustomed to certain chapters of the Quran, and so we know when it's speaking about something. If I said to you, Surah Al-Baqarah, and I asked you, which Baqarah has been referred to, what would you tell me? The? The cow of Prophet Musa alayhi salam, the one that needed slaughtering, and that you know the story of Israel, they kind of mocked at the cow that was supposed to be slaughtered. And so you can clearly see that there is a relationship between the name of the surah and the theme of the surah. If I said to you, Surah Al-Nisa, and Nisa means women. So again, you imagine that there should be something about women in Surah Al-Nisa. If the chapter was named An-Nisa and there was no mention of women, no mention of women's laws, no mention of any sort of protections or responding to the challenges of the time, you would say, there can't be any coherence here. Bil'akis. Of course, there is coherence. But there are certain chapters that we are less acquainted with. If I said to you, Surah Al-Qamar, again, just picking on some of them, yeah? I say, okay, the moon, Surah Tur, it doesn't necessarily, just by itself, provide you with the themes of the chapter, just by the name. Not necessarily, does it? Is the whole Surah talking about the moon? Is it talking about the celestial bodies or the fiqh of how to be able to derive your moon sighting laws? No. There is mention of the moon, but in what context? In which way is the word the moon opening up a theme of discussion? Yeah? So technique number one is not independent of itself. It is one of the ways in which we are... It is one of the ways in which we are able to derive the themes of the surah. Number one, the name of the surah. 